All right, it's true confession time. In spite of the fact that I have a really nice workshop at home, I really have a soft spot for toolboxes and tool totes. Things that you can take a small number of tools out to a specific site or to go help a friend or a neighbor with a project. Even though I have all the storage I need in my shop, it's nice to have some of those options to be able to go on the road, so to speak. And also when I'm at home, I like to keep some of my kind of the homeowner tools together that go together. Like I have a plastic tub right now that holds my plumbing tools, another one for all the electrical tools and supplies that I need. And what I want to do is get rid of the plastic and make something that looks kind of cool. So this toolbox is actually modeled on an old vintage Stanley one that they used to sell years and years ago. What I like about it is that it's pretty lightweight, but there's a lot that you can put inside. A couple of simple hook latches on the ends reveal the two storage compartments in the toolbox. So there's two deep ones on each side. One of them has a small tray that you can use to keep some of the little bits and baubles that end up getting way down and lost in the bottom of a toolbox. So I want to do that. One of the things that reminded me of making this particular version is that an original one appeared on the cover of a recent Woodcraft magazine or Woodcraft catalog. So there's a couple of little interesting features here that I want to adapt to this toolbox to make it my own. And I think I'm going to keep my electrical supplies in this one. The joinery on the toolbox is really simple. No dovetails. It's all kind of the work-a-day dados and grooves to hold parts together, some screws to add some reinforcement, and these lids, which are at an angle, help you get more access to the inside of the toolbox, add just a nice visual flair. Now the big problem with toolboxes and the challenge that you run into is you want it big enough to store all your tools, but as it gets bigger, it tends to get heavier. So for this one, I'm going to use some leftover white fir, similar to white pine from another project. But all the components in this toolbox are sized around commonly available construction materials you can find at any home center. So with my pieces and some rough cut parts here all set, we're ready to get started on making this toolbox. I hope you enjoy the ride. All right, the construction process for this toolbox starts with sizing a few parts. I have the two end pieces here and the two long sides. I ripped them to width and then using a crosscut sled here at the table saw, I trimmed one edge so I knew that I had it straight and 90 degrees to the bottom. Then I could set up the stop block for making identical cuts so that I know that these two pieces are the same length. Now what I'm setting up to do is to cut the joinery which we're going to use a tongue and dado joint to connect these two pieces or these four pieces at the corners. So I have a eighth inch wide blade set up in the saw and I'm going to use the sled here to guide my parts. So I want the depth of cut to be a quarter of an inch. So I have these setup blocks and then I can put another one over the top of it and then I can eyeball and feel and see when the blade touches the underside of this cap setup block. So I know everything's all right. Now for the fence setting, which I'm using as an end stop here, I have that matching the thickness of my end pieces. So the outside edge of the tooth is flush with this uh, end piece that I have up against the rip fence. So that keeps everything dialed in. And rather than going by measurements, I'm going from the real life parts. So now what I can do is bring the part up set it right over the top, right up against the rip fence, and make a dado on each end of both of these pieces. The matching part of our tongue and dado joinery is forming that tongue. Now you could do that at the table saw with a dado blade. I'm kind of a router table guy for that. So I have a straight bit set up here in the router table, and again, I'm using it and setting it up based on the actual parts. And to start with, I've set the projection of the bit using that setup gauge again so that it's a quarter of an inch away from the fence. The height of the bit is determined by 
the height of this dado when I have the side piece on end. So I put that in place there and I have it set just a little bit low because I kind of want to sneak up on this cut so I get a really nice fit. Now what I can do is make a cut along each end of my end pieces and it's going to cut a rabbit leaving just the thin tongue remaining. One other bit of joinery we need to take care of here at the router table, and that's to route a centered dado down the middle of the inside face of our two end pieces. That's going to hold a divider that we'll add a little bit later on when we get to the assembly. Now, I'm using a three-quarter inch straight bit that's going to match the size of that divider, and I've taken the time to lay out its position and set the fence on the router table so that the piece is centered, well, as centered as I can get it, to make sure when I go to assemble this thing that any inconsistencies are kind of canceled out. I put the two ends together and drew a triangle on them so that I know that the triangle end should go against the fence when I'm routing the dado. That way, the divider is still going to be straight across. Now, just like before, I'm going to use push pads to guide the pieces. So that means making sure that this small tongue is face down and against the fence on the router table. I'm also going to use the other part as a backup to prevent any tear out on the backside. All right, the distinctive feature of this toolbox is the house shape of it with those sloped sides that hold the lids. Now, I cut those after marking out the line over at the bandsaw. And then just use a block plane like you saw to clean up those edges and work down to the lines. I have these two pieces taped together with double-sided tape. That way I know that the two slopes on each side are identical to each other which gets us to the point where we are now, we can glue this main part of the case together. I'm gonna to start by putting glue in the dados, not a lot, and on that shoulder. I'm gonna put a little glue on the top part of the dado on the ends. The joinery is tight enough that once I get a clamp across just to pull it tight, it's going to stay there. Now, what I've also done is cut a divider piece that we talked about a little bit earlier, and that's really providing the backbone or the spine of this project. And I can fit that into the dados on the ends here. Just before I walk away, I'm going to double check to make sure that this is square, and then I got to wait for the glue to dry before we can move on to the next steps. A couple of key points, though, to, to highlight here before we move on. When you download the original plans, this center divider runs all the way to the bottom of the ends. But in my research, I found that on the original tool kit totes that these were modeled after, the divider stops a little bit from the bottom. That way you have a large well for larger items down in the bottom of the tool tote. So that's what I did here, cut that a little bit short. Then I had trimmed the side pieces to come pretty close to where the ends are. But once the glue is dry, I'm gonna use a hand plane and make this bevel on the sides match the slope on our end pieces. Now remember this is fur, so it's gonna plane really easy. Frankly, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So on our next video, what we're gonna do is add the bottom, the two lids, and then a sliding tray on the inside. Stick around.